Good evening, everyone. Uh, before we start, I think uh, there's a little announcement I would like to make. Uh, first and foremost, this talk, uh, it is not to discomfit any agency or government-related agencies or whatever work they are doing. It is not to daunt or fluster uh, any individual who is already working on any other projects. So um, let me be clear. Um, it's more into pragmatic. We are looking into pragmatic solution nowadays. Pragmatic solutions um, for our future generation. And um, actually, I know very little about coastal reservoirs. I'll be very honest. I started to look into coastal reservoirs 2018 while I was traveling. David, <laughs> we have been traveling. Uh, someone passed me a scientific paper from Elsevier on coastal reservoir. So the idea started, but please bear with me. This is a very basic talk, okay? This is a very basic talk to open up our minds that something else can be done. It's just like uh, you travel Malaysia Airlines, we know Batik, we know Asia, suddenly now we have my airline. So this is probably my airline, right? Thank you. So what is a, what is a coastal reservoir? I asked my four years old son, he was saying, this is a coast, this is a huge reservoir. Smarty boy, which is correct. We have a lot of water here, but unfortunately, salt water, we cannot use it to drink. Yes, you can use it, that's called desalinization. Right? So what's a coastal reservoir? It's, uh, it's, uh, it's two words, coastal plus a reservoir now. CR is actually a technology that develops river water in the sea. Okay, develops river water in the sea near a river mouth. It's a paradigm shift as said by Mr. Alex in the water resources development from storing water in the mountainous dam upstream to store water at the coast area. So I bring you back. Now we are storing water in Babagon. Next time, we're going to store water in, assuming in Tanjung Naru. Okay, that's, that's the first definition. Second, the mountainous dam in the upstream actually has become a sword of Democles. And to downstream people, eh, I think you heard what has happened in Libya three days ago. I have the slides, I'll be showing it to you later on. Now, CR technology can act as a barrier to protect coast from earthquake. It also can develop into freshwater agriculture. You can use for energy, you can use for tourism. And it has a potential even to transform neglected and polluted coastal towns or areas into a sustainable freshwater township. And Malaysia, as you know, ladies and gentlemen, we in the Southeast Asia, we have a steady, I'll use the word steady at the moment, steady annual rainfall. And the river flow pattern is very steady. The anonymous river network provides enough supply to build a coastal reservoir. Because we have so many rivers, actually there is no issue of building a coastal reservoir. Now, according to the research, embankment design and reservoir operation must account for climate change. I repeat, climate change implication, such as rising of the groundwater, changing of a stream flow discharge during intense and extended droughts, floods and water quality issues. We have seen droughts in Sabah. We say that we have a rainfall of 2,500 millimeter per annum, but we still have seen droughts. Personally, 2019, I was very worried from the month of March, April, May, June. Whenever I was flying to Laha Datu, I see all the clouds, those cumulus nimbus. You know what I do? I pray to them, don't stay here, please fall down. Because Laha Datu was having problem, Sampona was having problem, KK, we were almost running into problems, okay? Now, don't worry about all this. Although various technical aspects require further research, current state, the knowledge and technology are very sufficient because if you do coastal reservoir, 
The first question in your mind is water quality. Am I right? Because water is coming from all over. Whether it's from the river, it could be even from your uh, brackish water, it can be in your, in your dark water. But confirm there is a current state technology and knowledge to uh, solve these problems. Okay. This is the group that actually I am associated with. It's called the International Association of Coastal Reservoir Research. They are differing from other groups because every group, every time you say, everyone is saying, we have not enough water. So, world is running out of water, but we are saying that water is actually running out of our state or out of Sabah. Every time you see you have a drought problem or you have a water supply problem, you will be told that we have not enough water. Okay, so we are saying no, water is actually running out of Sabah. Um, let's see, how am I going to do this? Is it just like this? Nope. Nope. Okay, I think we're going to skip this. It's okay. You, you want to help me? I just want to scare you a bit. Don't have to. Okay. Ah, okay, fine. Let's go. Okay. Right, just play. Okay, hold this station. Okay, look at this video. This is in Japan. You look at the climatic changes, the cyclone is moving. Okay, if you, if you see the video just now, practically that is nature. Um, it has happened in Japan where a few of the dam, uh, I think there was one dam which was destroyed. And the anonymous water from the upstream inland, it moved towards the populated area. Yeah, it, it was very scary. But leave that alone. Um, I'm going to bring you back to 2021 where it was reported in the papers that we are having 22 water treatment plants that are having difficulties or problem. And the minister at that time particularly was talking about the turbidity of the water. The turbidity of these 22 treatment plants, when they have problem, they have to shut down. So he was talking uh, that out of 84, there are 84 water treatment plants in Sabah, 22 is having problems. Why is it a problem? Whenever it rains, the sediment becomes thicker. That means the turbidity has, will increase. Engineering wise, once it is more than 1000 NTU, you have to shut down the treatment plant. Okay, he was talking about that. And later on, the same minister started talking about construction of water catchments. We need to have a lot of water catchments. He is actually proposing to have every district to have a water catchment or water storage. He was talking about water storage. Now, his water storage could be either a regulating dam or an off-river storage. Okay? 
and um, he says that the, this, because of this disruption has always uh, caused crisis in Kota Kinabalu. So they came, the handsome men. I'm telling them, fine, you want to build, you build, no problem. You can build what we call, if you read this side, it is necessary. Yes, it's a fundamental. Storage is a fundamental. If you want to build it upstream, you call it a dam. You want to build it midstream, you call it a regulating dam or off-river storage. Or you want to do downstream, you do a coastal reservoir. So I never argue, I never said, yes, we need definitely a storage. However, recently, Another gentleman, the former Putatan member of parliament on the 16th of August 2023 in Borneo Post, he made a statement, he said that uh, building a coastal reservoir would be cheaper for Sabah government to resolve the state water woos compared to constructing a traditional dam, Awang Husaini Sahari. Another person, Datuk Donald, Datuk Donald Majuntin on the 1st of September has also said that coastal reservoir is nothing novel. It has been done. It's not a new technology, you know. Uh, and, and it's proven. It, uh, it has been proven and they, it has been constructed in many places like China, South Korea, Hong Kong and others. I can add this, actually India. Uh, even in uh, the, the Netherlands, you have all this. Okay. Now, developed countries around the world, he said, actually are decommissioning the dams because they are at the end of their lifespan and move to and by constructing new dams because you are actually destroying the nature. Okay. This is not said by me. This is said by uh, people uh, in you know outside there. Okay, somebody was asking me just now. Now, this is the book developed by a few professors, engineers in the water coastal, who are expert in water cost, uh, coastal, coastal reservoir. You can buy this book in Elsevier. It's called the Sustainable Water Resources Development Using Coastal Reservoir. Um, I'll show you, if you want to get excited, these are the people. All the handsome faces are there. Right? Actually, Lim Simpo is a Malaysian. Uh, then you have uh, T.G. Sitaram from IIT India, Indian Institute of Technology. You have uh, Dr. Shu King Yang and Professor M. Sivakuma. These two guys are from Wollongong University, Australia. Roger is from Cardiff. Sri Valsa Koltayar is M Mangalu University. That handsome guy is my classmate. He is in Nottingham University. He's a Malaysian. We were doing our masters in engineering in water supply uh, a few years back. Okay, so this is the International Water Association champions. So if if I go back, sorry, if I go back, where is it? Okay. Lim Simpo is also here. So there is nothing new. So this book is actually a collection of intellectual papers, all published uh, in, the, in the world, internationally. So they combine, they put into this. This book costs about 600 ringgit. It's very small. Okay. Right, you have seen the handsome fellas. Let's go here. Um, Myself and Engineer Lim, then we started to, to speak to the government or to tell the people, now, actually, you need to acquire alternative storage method. You want to do the dam, fine. You can do the dam. But let's consider, consider another alternative. Simple, ladies and gentlemen, you want to buy a car, 2.0. First choice, Toyota Camry. Second choice, uh, Honda Accord. Last but not least, Perdana. At least you give the option to the people of Sabah. Let them decide. So 
the Chinese one, I'm not very sure what is written, but I hope it's something very good. But Lim was telling me his name was spelled wrongly. So I'm not sure. So I said, never mind Lim, you are still famous. Okay. After that article, we were actually a bit shocked. Uh, we found out that uh, Takat and Safe Papa River also came out with articles. But we don't, we don't want to focus on that. What they are saying that Takat then referred the statements by International Water Association, uh, myself and uh, Engineer Lim, and Putatan Parliament member regarding the sustainability and environment friendly solution to water problems. So they are saying that. Okay, Takat. Okay, status of inland dams in the 21st century. On the salient points, number one, people, ladies and gentlemen, definitely would like to live near the sea. All of us are living near the sea. And the statistics actually show that 54 percent of the world's population live within 200 kilometers of the coast. But when I was drawing the 200 kilometer line from KK, I think Tambunan is only about 60 kilometers. So probably we'll be living maybe Keningau. My wife is from, uh, from Tambunan. So, but I think this, this is a general statement, huh? right? But the construction of large dams and reservoirs has actually slowed down globally since 1960. And, uh, and it's becoming more difficult to construct large dams because many negative impacts decimate the riverine ecosystem caused by the inland dams that has been found and public normally firmly oppose, oppose every time by building new dams because it has an impact, negative impact on economic, social environment. Where did I get the 1960? You can ask me. It's actually this is the global large dam construction from 1900 to 2010. If you see in the 1960s, yes, we were building a lot of dams. Then slowly it is going down. There must be a reason for it, right? But engineers definitely will say, when we design a dam, it's not going to be for one or two years, right? So you are talking rubbish. Of course, ah, one dam is going to be for 50 years or 100 years. Correct or not, huh, my friend? So, but the answer is like this. Whenever we design something, even though it's for 50 years, normally the capacity reaches very fast. I share my personal experience with you in Talibung 2 Phase 1. When we designed it in 2004, yeah, we designed it in 2004, it started uh, construction, completed construction in 2007, supposed to be 80 MLD. When I took over as a director, it was already 10% overload. <laughs> so it only took about 10 to 15 years to overload. We designed it actually for 30 or 40 years. You see, so the demand is there. So this is from the uh, group, uh, the large dams. So they are already slowing down. Okay, problems with dams. If you see these photos, all these are all the dam failures the crest failure, crest failure, that one is an earth dam and this is the latest one, this one is in Libya, this is in Libya, so extrapolate 5,000 people actually is running now, okay, the next one, okay, this is from Al Jazeera, on the 12th of September, more than 5,000 people. But I checked yesterday, uh, the, the news, CNN, it has gone up to about 6,000. So 6,000 people are dead. Why, ladies and gentlemen? Because Dam 1 collapsed and Dam 2 collapsed. Structural failure. I did some research from 2011. 2011, as of 2023, 23 dams have failed in the world. The failure normally is on structural, geotechnical. It's always there. Uh, so we have about 23. So you imagine in 10 years or 12 years, 13 years time, we have already got almost every year we have one dam failure. This one is very recent, few days ago. Okay. But the old school says that what is the flavor of inland dam? 
The flavor of inland dam is always the precipitation. You collect water from upstream. Okay? Precipitation. Now, if it doesn't rain, you are not going to have any water. If it rains, you're going to have water. Okay? Now, from 2016, 2017, let's just focus in for Sabah. You see the color here? This one is Papa Kenya. You see the color. So the rain is between what, 2002 to 2004, right? Then after that, uh, it improved 2017, but still the pocket is here, right? So 2018, it was slightly, it went back again to the same one. See, the pocket is growing bigger and bigger. This is not my data, this is from the meteorological. You can always go to the website and get it. 2019 is the same. 2020, it's like that. See? So, just now my slide was saying steady rainfall, right? So, does Sabah actually have a steady rainfall at the moment? I'm not sure. Very difficult to predict. I remember those days. Was it, um, Madam, probably you can correct me. Is it after Chinese New Year or before Chinese New Year? It rains. Let's, I, I, I'm 53 now. Uh, you imagine in the 70s, 80s, I went to Sakrahat. When we used to go for Chinese New Year, that would live one thing's house, you know, those, they'll say, Mom, I can't remember, is it before or after? But anyway, it has changed, right? But monsoon, last time we used to have monsoon uh, rains for, like, uh, you know that during harvest time is a dry season. Okay. And after that, there will be uh, the monsoon, monsoon. wind brought. Now, is, is it the same thing. now at the now, moment? No, exactly. No. Climate change. <laughs> Climate change. The problem is, we engineers, we are not amalgamating everyone. We only talk about our side, engineering side. We don't talk about climate. We don't talk about others. You see, geology and all those things. Okay? So, this is the map. Particularly, you see, this area just now, the rainfall is very not consistent. Okay? That's why I say I told you when I was flying to Ahadatu, I used to pray and the clouds. Please. Jatuh lah, jatuh kot. Bila mau hujan. Can imagine that. Okay. 31st August. We had an earthquake. I don't think so you guys know this. We had an earthquake actually in Ranau. We had an earthquake in Ranau. I am. Yeah, yeah. Ranau. I mean, our Ranau. It's more of the Ranau, I know. And this is the 31st. Yeah, yeah. first. Right. Now, look at this is the PGA line. Uh, I'm not a I'm not a earthquake expert. This is the PGA line and look at Papar again. Somebody was telling me, Tida Apa, we can do them in Papar. No. No problem. But there is one percent of the G. This is the uh, this is the, the unit for for what you call it the earthquake. So it is a possibility for earthquake to happen. Uh, of course, this is 0 0.01 uh, 0 0.01 g. I have a question again from you. Let's go back. I did my ilmu alam. Those who can remember, 1980 under Mary, uh, Datin Mary Sipaun, Simon Sipaun's wife. You know what was written in the book? Sabah tidak ada. Gempa bumi dan Sabah bukan duduk di bawah what the gunung berapi yang hidup kah? What happened a few years back? Was it 2015? Right? What happened? So, you guys answer yourself. Okay, this one doesn't excite me. This one the geologists will be excited. This one is exciting me. Ah, okay, you have a dam. Perlis, Kedah, Penang, Perak 30 days before 4 states dry up <coughs> This report is 2006 Okay, this one is in 2000 But they have dams And they were drying up We just learned just now precipitation is important, right? So if it doesn't rain, where are you going to get the water from? Next Kedah, Pula, Dilanda, Cuaca, Panas 2019 And look what happened to Buddha Dam in 2020, January. Again, para sudah berada di berada pada tahap 16.1 peratus. 
okay, move globally, Malaysia is blessed with a lot of water. Look at China, they are the other way around. Their population is more than their, their long-term precipitation. See? So you have Japan, you have Australia, you have Iran. This is in Malaysia. This is from uh, this is uh, I think this is also from the international organization, right? So we have a lot of rain. That is why I'm trying to tell you when we have a lot of rain, we should be storing it, not just letting it out into the into the sea. One map two zero two five. We are at the economic stage scarcity. We are there. And it's true, right at the moment. So this one was developed in 2020. They have already predicted all this. Of course you have challenges. Challenges when you build the dam. What are the challenges? Social, environment, climate change. These are real photos. Okay? People have been objecting on uh, either Kaijuan or Papa or any other thing. And this is what I got from Takan. Um, this is their writing actually. They say that, uh, I think you can just read it, but uh, they said it's between the Crocker Range Biosphere Reserve, the power program, I don't know what is MAN, and Biosphere, I mean, under the United Nations Education, Scientific and Cultural. Okay? So they said that uh, they want to melindungi Kazana Alamini to menimbangi masalah air di Pantai Parang. But I think uh, they are busy. Okay. Right. Now, why CR? Why do we want CR? CR is the best place to collect rainwater, as I said, unlike traditional dam, depends on precipitation. All rainwater ends up in the sea. Okay. Second one is uh, blocking the river flows with the dam would lead to soil erosion. You have seen that. Biologically dead river and upsetting the region's natural equilibrium and destroying agriculture and the cultural legacy. Most of our time is always the cultural legacy. Right? So what is the CR future in the context of United Nations? I've taken this slide from uh, IACC, uh, IACRR. Basically, there are three spheres of sustainability. We must have the environment aspect, we must have the economic aspect, and the social aspect. But what, what interests me is this, the SDG. Okay, this SDG are the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. SDG means Sustainable Development Goals. Okay? So, they were built on the 20 with uh, the year 2000, it is focusing on 17 goals and 169 targets. Uh, the uh, SDG uh, are uh, universal, uh, they call for action to end poverty, protect. Actually, they are talking about everything. But let's look at into SDG number 6. Clean water and sanitation. So, ensure availability and sus sustainability management of water and sanitation for all. Okay, this is SDG number 6. I was telling you we have 17, 17 goals, right? These are all the 17 goals. Uh, and the number six is clean water. Okay. This is the world is talking about it. Now, what about in South? Everyone is talking. What about in South? Let's see what's up. You have a little boy there. Suddenly you go to your office one day. You receive a memo. This three years old boy is asking you, please look into my future and take all preemptive measures and do not estimate my goals. Look for a pragmatic solution okay? and a sustainable one. Of course, he will sign it very nicely. Sabahan little boy. So whatever we do today is not for us, it's actually for the future. A lot of us, we talk about short term, short term, short term. Nobody thinks about long term. Okay. Now, I'm going to talk about long term today. 
This concept is an incremental innovation. It's nothing new. Do you understand what's an incremental innovation, right? Incremental that you have you have this handphone, I'm just going to add a little bit features more, and it becomes an innovation. Now, allow both the water supply storage and the flood storage in the proposal of a CR. Both flood plus water. And this slide I explained to you. So eventually, you will have your water supply storage at the bottom and you have the flood storage. It's very easy. You have all this network of these rivers, you build this coastal reservoir, you can couple it with the water treatment plant. When you build a water treatment plant nearer and immediately your, your whole network is actually in the center, right? It's at the coast. Now when you build a dam, your dam is here, your water treatment plant is going to be here and you're going to pump it or you're going to, if you have, uh, if you have gravity, that's fine. If you don't have, you're going to pump it into the system. This is all with tea. So you just imagine, ladies and gentlemen, we built a coastal reservoir in Kota Kinabalu. All your network is in KK, right? I'm talking about the pipes. Hana and Rex, the pipes. System is there, right? You start to boost inside. Your long term, your papa gone there, can go into standby mode. You get it? Because you don't have to push water now from the inland coming into the coastal. You have the coastal serving your, your, all, your, all your coastline customers. <coughs> and the, that Babagon Dam can be used as a storage and reserve for the future. That is long term. Okay? okay. What, how does the coastal reservoir actually work? You have this river, you build all the dikes, you have all this fresh water inside, you have all the tidal gates to control. Okay? Open and close. So practically whatever is flowing, it goes into here. Okay, you keep it. 2050. The National Water Resources 2010 study uh, has actually said that we we are planning for about 25,000 MLD. Whole Malaysia. We're talking about whole Malaysia, 25,000. And, uh, and the development, the water supply development has to go up to 31,000. That, that's, that's the plan. But we are saying that, do we have enough water in 2050? So, surface runoff in Peninsula Malaysia is about 141 BM, billion meter cube. Surface runoff in Sarawak is about 268 billion meter cube. And surface runoff of Sabah is uh, estimated at 87 billion meter cube. We are actually only looking into 2020, the consumption was only about 18.2 billion meter cube. Whole Malaysia, not Sabah. So we have a lot of water, a lot of fresh water. Our dream, our dream to solve the flood and also the water supply is actually by building a coastal reservoir. If you see this area is the airport, right? So you have Sungai, is it Sungai Kutatan? You have Sungai Kutatan, you have Sungai Kutatan, you have Sungai Kutatan, all this. About 12 kilometers square. You are looking into this. Okay. Uh, this one is a satellite photos. That's the airport over there. So, 12 kilometers square. 12 kilometers square is able to is able to sustain quite a, a large amount of water. Okay, this is a bit. This is on the on the technical side. Okay, so that's going to be your coastal reservoir. As I said, uh, you can always put the chamber plant and pump it back into the network. Okay, we are almost uh, to the end already. Uh, comparison. Number one is always the land acquisition. Land acquisition, you for them you require a land, a large land, and it will be in an later. Kita akan tenggelamkan dia. But for coastal reservoir, minimum land, utilizing all the river reserve buffers, waterways. Okay, and uh, yeah, you lose the productive productivity of the land. 
uh, environment impact, loss of flora and fauna. But the other side is you can create a man-made wetland and new ecosystem. Social impact creates social and uh, faces strong objection. Everyone knows that. This one is less social, social uh, impact. <coughs> I'm not sure who's going to oppose this if you want to build inside the inside the sea. Probably uh, the Department of Environment, one or two, but it's still workable, right? Uh, historical and heritage site, you know, yeah, it can be avoided. Uh, distance from the demand point. Remember, I was saying it's not very far. This one is very near, so low energy cost. Catchment area. Uh, yeah, you need you during drought, reservoir gathers no rainfall. Correct. Then after that, the other side it gathers low even during low flow. Every day water is flowing. Correct or not? I'm sure you have seen. Water is always flowing. Expandability uh, limited. Yeah. Another one can be expanded. Twelve kilometers. Next generation come. Let's expand it another ten kilometers. Right? Construction difficult and slower. This one is simple and faster. Uh, lifespan. This one is limited. Yeah, that one is a bit longer. Okay, benefits of coastal reservoir. No harm on river basins, no alteration of river course, no disturbance to forests, no physical displacement. Agriculture activity can be augmented. Solar panels also you can be, you know, you can put solar panels on the seawall. And you can also act as a flood mitigation. Real estate opportunities, remember I told you you can develop it, you can have uh, you can have commercial and residential. Roadways over the seawall, freshwater fishing, um, navigation and tourism. My idea is actually if you want to build a coastal reservoir from uh, from uh, Teluk Villa all the way to Kinaru, you can build a road. That means you bypass all the way to Tatan. You can actually bypass. So you can straight away go to Kinaru or even further. Okay. This one is a, just an amalgamation of the advantages of uh, the downstream reservoir. As I said, again, environment, minimum, economic, larger catchment area, social, minimum also, flood mitigation, uh, yeah, you can you can use the flood effect, and uh, operation and maintenance, uh, consistent water quality, relatively low maintenance and minimum another. Before you do all this, of course, uh, this is very technical. Yeah, you need to do all the studies first. Nothing is done uh, without uh, feasibility studies. So you need to study the river from uh, river profiling, uh, bathymetry, water level, the full data, water quality data, site assessment, preliminary geotechnical structure concept, preliminary cost estimation. These are all basically need to be done uh, on the pre feasibility. Now, I'm not saying that the coastal reservoir, I repeat, I'm not saying coastal reservoir is the answer. You need to do the study, whatever it is. We might have problems. The first generation problem was only, the first generation coastal reservoir had problem with, uh, on the water quality. There was a mixture. But the one in China now, they can deflect the good water and the bad water by putting all these uh, monitoring streamlines so you know, network, you have a good network, so you will know this is good water, this is bad water. Right? That is actually the last of the slide. As I said just now, ladies and gentlemen, this is just an beginning of coastal reservoir. We are not going to discuss about this is not a technical talk. My colleague here was actually asking, said Majid, why you are here, you should be IEM giving this talk. I said no, this is for us. This is for the public because I want you guys to understand that there is another method. Look, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the world is moving fast. Remember, handphones, I mean, our time, handphones was luxury. Correct or not? Mobira City, I'm sure Alex remember that, 17, 18,000. Now, my five years old, six years old son uses handphone sparingly. It doesn't have a handphone, it's difficult. So I'm just giving another opportunity. I'm asking for another opportunity. We are asking the state government practically to understand and try to, uh, what do you call it, give an alternative to the Sabahans. After all, this is bonus. Alright? 
with that thank you very much i hope i didn't bore you uh,